Hi, have you heard about Bipcoin? Not Bitcoin, but Bipcoin. Bravo, India, Papa, Coin. Bipcoin is a new cryptocurrency that you can start mining today for free on ordinary computers. Unlike most altcoins, Bipcoin is not a clone of Bitcoin. Bipcoin is based on entirely new, more recent, and better code called CryptoNote. So unlike Bitcoin, Bipcoin has truly untraceable transactions, does not require specialized mining rigs, and has adaptive limits. Plus, Bipcoin is the only cryptocurrency covered by the Bipcot No Government License. This allows use and reuse by anyone except governments and government agents. If you're still kicking yourself in the head for not getting in on the ground floor of Bitcoin, start mining, using, and trading. Trading Bipcoin today. Not a guarantee. Mining Bipcoin costs you nothing but the electricity to run your computer. And we already take Bipcoin for stickers and buttons. Go to Bipcoin.org. That's Bipcoin.org. Once again, that's Bravo India Papa Coin.org. Yeah, I've noticed that when the uh, the commercial the the video that came out with the cop pulling the black lady over to give her ice cream. You remember that? Oh yeah. yeah. There was just a ton of comments where like why would you pull somebody over to give them ice cream? Like, why are you trying to ruin people's day? And that was that was like the flavor of the comments. And I was like, this is great. It's happening. Bring these ideas to light and make people realize, you know, that this government force uh, is, is the problem. Um, and and it, to me, it's like I, I, I say, imagine you're an abolitionist in the 19th century. And, and the, the slave masters are giving you the same exact argument. Who's going to pick the cotton? Hey, seeds of liberty. Please fervently complete the course, report him to the infantry. Finish him, deconstruct the fallacy. Season all production means it seems to spawn a tragedy. Peep the action, please. A fraction of the allegory. Corollary cadence is complaining on a sadder story. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 93rd episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. Now, with a new mailman exception. Learn more at <laughs> bipcot.org. So, the new mailman exception? Yes, the the I new like that. the new good flavor text. The new the, the new edition of the Bipcot license, the no government license has been updated and it includes the mailman exception, which now allows the option for the bearer of said license to choose if all government agents are not allowed to use their you know, product or service and are, and are therefore subject to being ridiculed in perpetuity for violating the contract. It's You can, if you want to, you can make exceptions for anybody who doesn't directly aggress upon you. You know, like obviously the police, the military to a certain extent, the IRS, those type of people who will aggress against you or do carry guns, stuff like that, or any of the any of the other agencies that do have. So this gun- goes all the way up to the Postmaster General, huh? Well, I think they carry guns. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I have no idea. But yeah, you, but you don't have to. It's it's an, that's why it's an exception. You can you can do it or you can keep it as is. Uh, I have not altered any of the things that I bip caught at the current moment, but I've also haven't been a very big stickler about it. I've only gone after a couple of cops who have blatantly gone after stuff that either I've been it's either been mine or it's been connected to things that I have something to yeah do with. I remember that yeah like those guys I went after um, so uh, I was really hoping it was an exception specifically for mailmen like it, that was written specifically for the mail that's sexist that's sexist you cis white hetero shit lord I think it's jobist actually uh, or careerist I don't know <laughs> it's sexist it should be male person Oh, I missed that part of it. Yeah, I, I try not to. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, think, I'm thinking in terms of what we're talking about and not in terms of SJWs. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, so this uh, week. It's best not to think in their terms, Jeremy. Yeah. Well, so anyway, before we get too much further away this week, uh, as you've probably already heard, we have Andre Kira here again with us. And Dave, of course, as usual. I am Jeremy. And... We were going to let Andre go wild this week because he came in prepared with some topics, wanted to talk about some things. So, Andre, why don't you take it away, my friend? (laughs) That's putting a lot of pressure on my shoulders. I don't know if I'm comfortable with this. You got this, bro. Trial by fire, brother. Trial by fire. I've I've been been voluntold, so now it's going to happen, I guess. There you go. Uh, No, uh, what we were talking about, because like I said, um, I'd had a couple of conversations and I made a post about this. 
lampooning one of the guys I was talking to, but uh, I've had a lot of conversations recently about um, order following and trying to engage with people, friends that I used to have in the military and trying to explain, you know, the nature of property norms and bodily ownership and, uh, you know, consent and non-aggression. And I have had the, the most unbelievable lack of traction with anybody the last couple of weeks. And it's just, it's, just been aggravating, I guess. So that's why it's on the the front of my mind. Um, but I think I covered this. I know I covered it with uh, Merrick. I remember we had a, an episode on his podcast where we talked about it because he's a big history buff for World War One, and I'm, you know, I'm getting there. I'm I'm really interested in it. But uh, uh, we were talking about the moral culpability of of order followers and who's who in the end of the day is is responsible. The guy giving the orders or the person who carries them out. Uh, it's my contention, and it's I've argued the point that both people are morally culpable, but one is holds more culpability than the other. Like one act is is worse than the other, and it always falls back. I think on, it depends on if the the person below is coerced into it. But I mean, I, I follow your logic here. Well, yeah, no, and you're a hundred percent correct. If there's coercion involved, if you know a uh, gun is held to your head and you're told that you have to go kill these random people, otherwise you're going to get shot shot or your family's going to get killed yeah then yeah obviously there, there's another component there's a, a an additional dimension but i'm talking about the people that volunteer like i had volunteered mm -hmm. to you know serve the country and you know be in the armed forces and all the rest of that stuff and when it comes to that when you volunteer and there is no coercion it's my it's been my contention that the order of followers the people that actually pull the triggers are the people that bear the majority of moral responsibility because it's like i say it, it's somebody that says you know go uh, to the other side of the world and kill random people who you have no idea who they are in a place you've never even heard of for a reason that you can't even articulate the, if without the people that pull the trigger they're just psychopaths that are babbling incoherently they're no different than uh, the guys on my buddy's bus who uh, drives a metro bus in los angeles they get on there completely naked and start screaming at the other passengers. That's all they are. Without the order followers, they're just random psychos on buses without clothes on screaming gibberish. Mm -hmm. But once you have somebody to pull the trigger, then that gibberish becomes reality. And I think Jared uh, uh, made a post about uh, you know pretending to be anarchists or like LARPing anarchy because you know as it stands right now, there's very little we can do without running into government guns and pointed mm -hmm. at us. Crap, and I totally forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> that happens to me sometimes, too, in thought. My, my mind just blanked completely. I had a great thought. The and guns of government. Right yeah. out the window. You're talking about LARPing and the guns of government, so. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody respond. I'll, I'll try and come back to what I was trying to think. Uh, I, I know I when he was talking about that, you know, that it's, it's just uh, – uh, this delusion he, he's he's came up with this idea uh, of there being a kind of a no way to not be pra pragmatic uh in some aspects of the state and it's just fact like there's so certain things like driving on the roads or or interacting with police uh that you just you don't get a choice in no matter what no matter how much you believe in anything uh, on, i mean on the earlier point i agree with you on because you know the, the the culpability lies in the hands of the person who does what they do doesn't matter unless somebody's pointing a gun at you then oh of course but and even if someone has a gun pointed at you you still have to put your tell your brain to pull the trigger even then like so well no it's still even a, if just, you're being coerced it's still a still choice have to pull the trigger but coercion is not consent we make that same argument all the time so it's not your which is exactly the argument i had immediately following this discussion that i was having with another guy that i was friends with in the army about coercion and, co and consent. And I, re I don't know what it is. I, I, I've never had this experience because I never thought of it this way. Like the, It's kind of a foreign concept to me. But as I'm sure you're all aware, and I'm aware because I've, I've had to talk to these people, they're of the mindset that, well, you know, if you make the choice, then obviously you consented to it because you could have just chosen to die. I'm mm -hmm. like, that, that's not really how that works. Uh, that's no, that's the opposite of how that works. Well, exactly, because, I mean, uh, even if you strip out everything else, choosing that you could have chosen to die kind of goes against human nature. 
you know, because we are programmed to try to live. That's kind of what we do, you know. <laughs> so to tell people you had a choice to die in that situation is borders on lunacy as far as I'm concerned. Because yeah. you, you didn't have, you don't really have, I mean, you have a choice, but it's a false one because well, most people yeah, are. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, because most people are inherently self-interested. It's just, it's just the way we're wired. You know, the, it's this, it's the same concept as if, you know, the plane's going down, you're supposed to put the oxygen mask over your face first, even before you do it to your kid. Why? Because if you don't, if, if you're trying to save your kid and you die in the process, you're not any good to your freaking kid. So yeah, and then you both die. Exactly. So self-preservation always comes first. And in that situation, it's the ultimate, like you're being told if, if you don't do this, you're going to be, you're going to be killed. Could you decide to try to be a martyr and then have the person die anyway? You know, most likely, um, you know, but it's still, it's, it's a false choice. So I, I, I don't, I don't understand people's reasoning. Or and I'm, and I'm glad reasoning. you mentioned that with the person dying anyway, because that's the, that's the other, the other side of that, that I've tried to bring up to people. If the outcome is going to be the same, whether or not you consent to do it, like yeah, so case in point, choice. if somebody yeah, if somebody holds a gun to your head and tells you you need to kill that guy and you say, Well, what happens if I don't? I'm gonna kill you and then I'm I'm still gonna kill the guy. So the end result is the same. So it can't be said that your choice affects the outcome, therefore it's a false choice, like mm -hmm. you said. So the, the, it's an illusion that statists use to try and justify, oh well, you know, obviously you consented because you did it. So it's like uh the well, you pay taxes, so you, you consent to taxation. Right, or you use the road so you can send. Yeah, to the they state. do that all the time, Andre. Uh huh. Yo, God, it's like, yes. oh, you're an anarchist. Well, call me when you don't drive on socialist roads or use socialist this or that. And it's like, okay, I got you, but like, that's not an argument. Well, of course it's not, and it's funny. I, I just I came across uh, somebody talking about that because I'm currently in the process of helping create the audio book for Ben Stone's new book. And the section I was reading tonight before we did the show was talking about that and how y you and others were already robbed for those roads to be put there. You driving on them is not a, is, has nothing to do with consent, nor are you part participating in the theft because it's already been done and you were one of the people that were stolen from. <laughs> so using the roads is perfectly within your quote unquote rights which should make sense to these people because these are usually the same people that crow on and on about different rights that they have. So you think yeah. that you think yeah, that yeah, argument know, right? would make sense to them, but of course, no, it doesn't because then most of the time, at least when I engage in these conversations, the next move is always a goalpost one and they'll just shift the topic slightly so that they don't actually have to address that problem with their line of thinking. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Because the minute they can't, you know, put you in uh, into a box and project on you, uh, you know, essentially what they, the, 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 you know, the evil person that they want you to be, then uh, uh, they have really nothing to say and they, they want out as fast as possible. Sure. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's, it's supremely satisfying watching them flounder and flail their arms and like screech at the top of their lungs when they try to corner you and you just respond with, yeah, okay, but what's your point? <laughs> yeah, it, and it's great when you're logically consistent like that. It's fantastic. It's the most satisfying feeling in the world. Well, yeah, because you can infuriate people without even trying. Like you don't have to go into you know troll mode for lack of a better term. <laughs> that a lot of people will just to get a rise out of people. Which I mean, I've done it before too. I've been involved in conversations when you see they're going no. Oh yeah, me too. If the I person, all of us have. Yeah, if the person be starts becoming, I've never a, done that. If the person starts, yeah, shut up. Yes, you if have. the person starts becoming like abusive on their end well then it's just like okay i could walk away but no i'm just going to stay around and mess with you but for the most part you don't even have to go to that level if you just because most of no. them free like you said they freak out when it comes to these situations so if you just i mean that's what i used to do that's why when people would ask me why i would spend like days on certain conversations on the seeds page that was exactly why i was doing it because i wasn't getting frustrated at all and mm -hmm. i i chose not to pick on these people or make fun of them, I would just keep answering their questions and then throwing questions back at them. But I would just keep going with the logic. And the most people that, like I said, that I encounter in that situation, and it sounds like, you know, similar for you guys, that they don't know what to do. And nope. if, if, you, if you start trolling them or start calling them names or making fun of them, that they know how to deal with. So that they can fire back, no problem. 
But when you sit there and you remain calm, it's like it's like them and anybody else around them is running around screaming about about you know that their heads that their hair is on fire and and you're just sitting there calmly just looking around. I've, I've been, taking in, it I've been in. like that usually my my whole life, even if I'm I'm wrong in the sense. Um, I like to just sit back and and test the knowledge, and if it's wrong, you know I'll run into somebody that can uh, get the logic better. But uh, there's no really no reason to get upset in, in a discussion, in my opinion. You can really tell when people don't want to have a discussion when they get super duper upset and then it's, well, you just questioned all my gods, essentially. I can't like have a rational discussion with you anymore. And it's like, well, they need to be questioned. Sorry, but like, let's get on with it. Well, sure. But mo- I think most of those people don't even want, it's not even necessarily they don't want to be questioned. They don't know how to deal with the questions. <laughs> I don't even think well, they've gotten yeah, to the point they don't, they don't, know they don't they want to be. It's just a matter of, I, I, what do you mean? What do you mean you're going to question this stuff? Cause that, that's another problem that people like us, you know, especially me, I tend to run into that a lot of people have this idea that so many things in life are just axiomatic and they just, they're just there. They just exist. That's just the way it is. Like, nope, we, that, that's, that, that's the starting point. We don't even have to discuss that. That's not changing. Well, no, that, yeah. that's not how yeah, this works. Exactly. That, that's not how any of this works. So, you know, when you when you have to start check, you know, getting that stuff. And like I said, most of them would prefer you to react negatively because that's their wheelhouse. That's how they know how to deal with you. You know, I've done that on different cop pages and stuff like that. When at any time a bunch of us go there to leave comments on usually one of their ridiculous pictures of a really drug bust that they did. Well, there's there's getting to be more and more people. And if you notice, and this just, you know, it again, it's so hard to tell, especially on social media, that there's trolls everywhere. So you never know what is 100% accurate or not. But there seems mm-hmm. to be, especially in the like last week or so, there's been f- three or four of these stories that have floated around and gotten past the different groups. And when I go to oh, check these... Hammered. Yeah, when I go to check these, they're getting hammered by everybody, including... Everyone, I saw, like... Yeah, that foresight... Uh, was the Forsyth Police Department in Pennsylvania, the one from yesterday? Yeah. I saw a whole crap load of comments from people saying, hey, I normally support you guys and I donate to you, but this is over the line. Like, what are you doing? Like, there's people out here dying over all this other stuff and you're really over a plant? Yeah, so- it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's-, it, it, it's, I don't know if it's a snowball, but I, I know me and you have been in this cop ridicule game for, the better part of three years now, or at least I have been. Yeah, I've been doing. And, the, I've been doing the cop bashing thing for about five years now. And you know, and I remember when it would be one or two of us posting on there, you know, and we'd get banned from the page. But now, it's just a flood. They can't stop it. Like every comment is either negative or one of their family members going, "Way to get the bad guys," and it's like, yeah, you can only you <laughs> you know why your family is saying all that. Okay, it's because they are, you know, they are still in a state of refusal to accept the nature of your job. But the, 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 the greater people, so to say, the people that aren't in that whole, you know, s- essentially a secret society, they are seeing what it is for it's, it's become the, the mask has came off, so to say. And it's go read any cop comment unless it's them like saving a puppy or something even if it's them saving a puppy it's like why don't you guys go do your a job or get a real job or and it's like hey where were you guys three years ago four years ago <laughs> yeah i've noticed that we're in the uh the commercial the the video that came out with a cop pulling the black lady over to give her ice cream you remember that oh yeah, yeah. there was just a ton of comments where like why would you pull somebody over to give them ice cream like why are you trying to ruin people's day and that was that was like the flavor of the comments and i was like this is great it's happening <laughs> you know how insane it is to pull someone over for ice cream because like let's just say they're a, i don't know an armed heroin dealer and they go holy shit i'm getting pulled over and they just speed off and run over a few people and then get in a shootout all because you were trying to give a motherfucker some ice cream you understand how ridiculous that is Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and I mean not to mention the. Fact I know I'm making the, the the if we can save just one child uh, argument, but I mean it really is ridiculous. To oh pull, yeah, no, hundred percent. To pull someone over in any other uh, case of an emergency or administration of the law, and I don't think handing out free ice cream paid for invariably by the state 
is well, an emergency or well yeah that's <laughs> see that's the, that's the thing that gets me because they you know they do the a lot of these things for publicity stunts Oh, you yeah. know, there was the, there's the stories all the time out here, you know, close to me in New York City, where there was a couple of years ago, there was this one cop who was supposedly being this great guy and helping these homeless people out and buying them shoes and stuff like that. And it's like, well, yeah, where did you get that money to buy the shoes? Was it from your job that was extorted money to begin with? <gasps> uh oh, you know, like and you're, if you're doing it, if you're doing these things on duty, then they're clearly publicity stunts because yeah. you are now wasting the taxpayers money and not actually trying to solve any actual crimes or trying to take care of any actual criminals. You're doing something nice, doing something nice. That's great. You don't need a shiny badge and a special uniform to do that. You can do that anytime you want, especially on your off time. I would encourage it, it just, and I would say, I would congratulate it, you for doing so. But to do it on the job, to me, makes it extra disgusting, honestly. Al yeah, is, altruism by extortion is not altruism. It's yeah. intellectually lazy and dishonest. Is it just, just disgusting to see the, uh, you know, the, the, the services were paid, uh, were forced to pay for, uh, like, P getting to do PR, like, with our money? Well, like yeah, that's the other death. aspect. Like, that's the whole thing of it. Like, like you know, and uh, my it just frustrates me to no end. It's like, in my eyes, as socialists forcing me to pay for their propaganda because I understand the nature of nature of propaganda. And it's just like so many people are just willingly like, I don't want to pay for propaganda. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, what do you well, think? Of course, how else They're just socialism. giant propaganda f factories. Well, of course, how else does socialism pay for its propaganda? I mean, hell, look at the USSR. Who, who do you think paid for all of those murals? Who do you think painted them? Yeah. Slaves. <laughs> Dear glorious leader, plastered <laughs> all over the walls. It sure as hell wasn't an act of charity. I can promise you that. Yeah, and the, and people say, oh, well, you know, they, they, they don't want to pay for propaganda. But yeah, everything, pretty much everything you're paying for with the government is essentially a form of propaganda. <laughs> because it's you're paying yes. you're paying to help perpetuate your own slavery. Oh my god. And in oh, order they, to do that to. in order to do that you need to be <laughs> propagandized constantly by every facet of the government. That's all they do. They're constantly in spin cycle. They're constantly propagandizing. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, we've discussed Well, yeah. well they course, can't they, let they you wake to. up to the theft. They can't if they if they stop for a second and let you wake up to the theft, if they stop the Hegelian dialect, they're done. Well, not it always only has that, to be a new problem that they're fighting. War on terror, well, war on poverty, war on this, war on that. It's never going to stop, ever. Not only that, but if they stopped trying to talk themselves up and sell themselves and let their work speak for themselves, their work is awful. Like, nobody <laughs> wants what they're offering. If they, like, literally, you know how you, the expression goes, like, well, I let my work speak for itself. In their case, they would... If they were employees at a company, they would be fired immediately <laughs> because they're garbage employees. Well, so they have to. There's there's no way to 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 not do it because if they do it, then that's it. That's they're done. I don't know what purchasing manager could agree to buy five hundred dollar hammers that you can go to Lowe's and buy for three dollars for the army, but I I bet you they got a pay raise and a and a pension. I guarantee. You. Well, that's because those hammers weren't five hundred dollars; they were they were five thousand dollars, Dave. Well, listen, well, man. I bet he got a pay raise and a pension. Probably. The uh, senator's nephew's cousin's hairdresser needs to get his, uh, you know, needs to get a little help. So, you know, when things like that happen. <laughs> <laughs> For certain, sure. Oh yeah, certain, they, certain have, they have a the job in DFAS where he can process payments that don't exist and cook books because that's. That's how the Pentagon has lost, you know, the, a, a story came out last year, I think, where they lost six and a half trillion dollars when they were doing their accounting for the fiscal year. Well, mm -hmm. isn't that the second time, though? Because, oh, yeah, wasn't the wasn't the, the five or nine million billion or whatever it was during 9-11? Wasn't that from the Defense Department as well? Or am I oh, mistaken yeah, about this that? Is, this, this is, is an ongoing Pentagon. thing. Th this is an ongoing thing. This happens literally every year. Not a year goes by where the Pentagon budget budgets. does not meet. No, it's not. I wish it was because that would actually you don't be a think reason. It is no. Because every time no. I've heard, no, they like, have their own special. This, like it's classified. Oh no, 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 it. that like, stuff. What? No, no, no. The, 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 there's a whole separate section for the black budgets. 
Those don't come no, out of their is, budgets. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, the yeah black, no, no, the, this the, is, the this black is operation. purely the stuff they have on the books. Yeah, exactly. Even the books, the books on the books don't make sense. Yeah, that, like, that, that's the crazy thing. <laughs> It's because, so important. Uh, th- it's so important that we realize what we're up against, and, and it's times like these that I get reminded how monstrous and how seemingly perilous it is for us. We we have to take action, and that's that's what is the most important thing I think that has to be the discussion for this year, 2017 has to be action. Well, I'm, I'm down. I'm with you, man. I mean, I, I that's what I've been all about for a while. That's why I started OTR. That's why I started doing the I started doing the pot, the Anarchy Act, Action podcast where we try to discuss things that we can actually go out and do every week, you know, and and that's why I try to encourage people constantly to actually get out and do things even if it's not like activism in the traditional sense. There's so many things and I mean I brought it up before but and I've spoken about it at length here before, but Ben's book, Ben Stone's book uh, that just came out last year has a lot of great ideas of things you can do to start making yourself freer and hopefully start making other people freer too. You know, it still doesn't involve going out there and trying to be the militia and trying to start a revolution because he, I mean, he's somebody who came up with a plan centered around what he refers to as the zero aggression principle. And, you know, there's, there's ways that you can do things and actually if you have the testicular fortitude and are willing to take the risks, there's things you, you can do to actually take action and strike out against the state and still follow the zero aggression principle. Yeah. Because that's all based the, on the Absolutely. Well, yeah, and, but, and Ben's Ben's got another thing, uh, another podcast series on subversion that's great. Great. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yep. Yeah, Ben. Yeah, Ben Stone's podcast. I think it was actually you that got me to listen to him, Jeremy. You were like, you you have to listen to these days. I was like, oh, okay, the, I will. the Bad Quaker podcast was amazing. Ba- okay, I've heard of Bad Quaker. Yeah, that's I'm, ben, I'm that's Ben Stone. Check it out. Yeah, that's. Do you want to find that that series and throw it up on our RSS feed? I know he won't care, but like, do you want to like roll that out over a week or so, or, or two weeks? If or we have the room, I'm sure we could do it. Yeah, sure, that, and that I, I know cool Ben link. would be more than happy to let me put it up there because uh, I, I try to stay in touch it, it, with him it, regularly. I remember it now. It's coming back to me. Yeah, that's a. Well, yeah. that yeah, that and, the, the particular book is built on that, right? Yeah, the particular series you're talking about was built upon a five or maybe six part series he did mm-hmm. uh, a few years back, uh, which actually start that started from another essay he wrote, and then I believe I think Lufine actually told me that there was another project he did a couple years before that that he's just constantly been building upon this and building upon this and building upon this, and this is where through this whole process is where he came up with the idea of what he calls the Lego distribution network, and that is the activists who are essentially running around once the state goes to sleep at night, dropping Legos all over the carpet. So when the, when the, when the state wakes up in the morning, he steps all over them. And if we're lucky, he'll fall down the fucking stairs. Uh, yeah. If not, we're just annoying the crap out of them and constantly being an aggravation. I mean, that's why the tagline, I think still to this day on my Twitter account is that I, you know, I'm a constant, constant thorn in the side of the state because that's what I want to be. You know, and that's not for everybody because there's options you could you do. Gotta you got to be Martin hidden. Luther, man. And I'm not talking about Martin Luther King Jr. I'm talking about Martin Luther, the guy that made the printing press and told the church, screw you, I'm printing the Bible. Okay, uh, you got to no, be that, that guy. Was, that was, that was, Johann, it was Johannes Gutenberg. Yes. Martin Luther. Uh, the, the, he, the oh, yeah. The printing he, press was Gutenberg. Yeah, yes. he, my bad, my bad. No, my he bad. just. I, thought, he I just, could have he, swore he was the first person that translated the Bible into German. No, he d- he was, but it, it had nothing to do with the, yeah. okay. it had nothing to do with the printing press. He was just he was fed up with the hierarchy in the church saying that only the people of the, the only the people in the well, in the clergy and stuff me, could read the Bible. The common man was not allowed to read the Bible. They were to have the Bible read to them. And Martin mm-hmm. Luther was just like, well, this is ridiculous. How the fuck do we know what's in it? <laughs> how are we <laughs> how are we supposed to in good conscience just tell people, oh, just just believe us. It's it's in there. It's in there. So well, yeah, he's, he's the guy that started the Reformation few... against the church. Yeah, the Protestant that, Reformation. That, that either either way, it's so one you're, you're guy. in the right place. You were in the right place. Either way, one guy did it. So don't tell me one guy talking can't do it because essentially he was just talking. He was just saying, hey, this is BS. This is BS. This is that. You know, and and he was just the lucky guy that didn't get his tongue cut out by the church. But you know, uh. He won. 
You know, his, his, in uh, the long run, yes. He felt what, yeah, he, what he felt was right. He stuck to his guns and he, he won technically. Yeah. But so, Dave, what can one man do? What can, what, what can I do? You know, what can I would I probably do? say there's three men that are, their names are spoken more than anyone. I'd probably say Jesus, Hitler, and uh, who, who else after that? Huh? George Washington, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. But, but what can I do? I what don't know. I what could do? they do? But what can I do? What? You can uh, realize you're an individual, start acting like it, and uh, pretty much don't aggress against anybody else. But Dave, that, I'm only hard. one man. What can I do? <laughs> I, you have to realize that, that you I think Dave's missing your point, man. Andre. But, <laughs> but, but who will build the roads? <laughs> what can I do? Uh, whatever you may. There you go. But the, but well, I mean that, that it is a good. <laughs> Sorry, question. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to, to segue into nonsense for a second. No, I, just, I, 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 I. That's what this show is about, Andre. <laughs> Most of the time, <laughs> that's yeah. why we have you on here. <laughs> well, I mean, I was get. I was starting to talk about stuff like that before. I mean, there, there. It is. It is a good question, though. It's a fair question. What can one person do? Well, there's tons of things you can do. It depends on again, what level you're willing to take it to, what risks you're willing to take. I mean, you could go completely full blown nihilist and just go for the top to try to, you know, Adam Kokesh this thing and bring it down, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see that as a, well, I don't advocate anything like that, but, uh, I, I, I'm starting to, I don't know, look at, I trying to start really thinking about if, if your plan is to not aggress, but you, you're going to have to involve the state in, in what you're going to do because there's no other option just go ahead and do it don't let like don't let the fact that the state is involved in it hold you back like that's how they win they're stopping that marketplace from happening they're stopping you from doing what you want but get in there and try to move the market so far past their regulations that they can't handle it they can't keep up that's what apple's doing that's what all these other big companies are doing that's what all all the people are doing in innovations and everything you you beat their regulations because they're always a lagging indicator Right. So right. you can't sit around and go, oh, we can't, you know, that would involve the state. So I can't do that. You know, like, I don't advocate voting. I don't advocate any political means at all. But what I'm saying is, like, if you got to go pay to get your tag on your car so you don't get arrested, go do it. Well, no, you that's like, yeah. Well, that, that's what I'm talking about with the level of risk that you're willing to take, because that's actually something that's touched on in that book as well, uh, is that. You know, and he's he, Ben's talked about it. And I've heard other people talk about it before. Like, if you want to be a, if you actually want to be an activist of some sort, if you want to actually take part in things and actually want to try to actively do things, well, then the smartest move is to make sure you have all the proper paperwork so that you don't have to worry about the stupid on top of everything else. Because absolutely, you know, if you're out there doing whatever it is, whether you're leading protests, whether you're just out there trying to educate people, whether you are doing things like, you know, taking it directly to the state, but still trying to follow the zero aggression principle, which, which I, you know, I was saying before basically means that that follows the principle that anything that the government owned is technically still unowned property. Of course, Since public property is an oxymoron. So <laughs> that means technically all that stuff's up for homesteading. However, you do again have to understand the risks because, you know, I think the way Ben put it in the book is, you know, if if I wanted to just go ahead and take the window out of, say, a police car, well, technically that's unowned property and I could homestead that motherfucker. However, there's most likely going to be a nut job with a gun somewhere around there telling me that if I try to take <laughs> that window, he's going to shoot me. That's, where, yep. pra that's yep. where pragmatism comes in. Because mm -hmm. under the, from a libertarian standpoint, from a moralist anarchist standpoint, you would be morally justified in homesteading that property and also defending yourself because the the, the nut Could job you homestead cop. his uniform and his gun as well? Well, yeah, Just but again, the, uh, well, you then have, who is how or is anybody going to know you're the cop or not? Is what I'm saying. What do you mean? Take Nothing. their stuff and play cop. I'm or? just being silly. Oh. 
if well, you homesteaded a cop's uniform and, and gun and badge since it's public property. <laughs> well, yeah, but again, you could try that and you might be morally yeah, be justified. want to do that. Well, exactly. You'll you'll probably end up shot. Uh, so it, it's not exactly the smart move to make necessarily. <laughs> but, you know, these things, I mean, on the other hand, I, I, as I've said many times before, that if you got enough people doing these things, then it wouldn't matter. You could just take these things because they're not going to be able yeah. to stop you. No, you're absolutely right. You know, but we are we are way, way, way short on those numbers currently. So we have to do what here we can, you know? <laughs> in, in, in the U.S. of A. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just in sure. general, there's what, seven plus billion people in the world. And I'm guessing the percentages aren't much different unless they're s smaller in other areas. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking like one percent of the world's population, maybe. You know, no, no, I don't even think we're we're quite to that. Well, yet. that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Worldwide, you know, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So we got a long way to go, but that's why you do things that you can right now, and it starts with taking care of you and yours first and foremost. And you started to touch on that before, Dave. With you know, if you have to do things through the system, you know, like the tags and stuff like that. Even if the only choice you currently have to provide for your family is to take a government job, you know, as long as you're not directly aggressing against people in the capacity of your job, well, then it's a personal decision. But you know, you you or do it's you, like you wake up while you have a government job. It's like well, I yeah. Don't know if I, I mean, you'll have some people say, yeah, you should quit your job in this. You know, I, I hey, if you feel so morally. Um, you know, I don't know, illegitimate in that job, get out and get you a private citizen uh, job in the private, you know, sector by all means. But the job right there is they're going to fill that position. Again, you could be essentially robbing the state. You could be making it more inefficient. Well, yeah, the job. well, that's more inefficient is exactly the point I was going to make because and, and also the fact that, yeah, they'll just hire somebody else. So you'll you may feel better for yourself morally, but you haven't exactly progressed anything very far. However, if you stay in there and gum up the works, like right now, would you rather be sheriff or the guy that's currently sheriff where you're at? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, well, exactly. Kind of a well, especially for me because I live in the only county in the entire fucking country that does not have an elected sheriff. <laughs> We here in Nassau yeah, County. No, no, we're going to appoint those how things. How does that work? Oh. That is number one. That's unconstitutional. No right? shit, Sherlock. But how we are it, the only county in the country that has an appointed sheriff. Yeah, I it's mean, a cluster. By all here. pragmatic <laughs> sense, that is one hundred percent unconstitutional. There is actually only hey, I, I one constitutionally. I'm going to step for away from my mic for just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, that's fine. The Constitution is like specifically puts in sheriffs to administer the Constitution. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's well, their job. And their justification is, oh, we still have one. <laughs> yeah. We, well, we got one. And he's he's, he's chosen administering the Constitution, but he wasn't elected by the, he's, the he's, law. He's he's, <laughs> he's, he's he's appointed by one of the people that you did elect, you know, kind of like the president and the Supreme Court justices. Well, you know, by proxy, he was kind of selected. No, no, he wasn't. <laughs> I contend that that's when the, the United States started down just the shit track. And that's when I can't remember the amendment, but it's when they basically stopped the state senates from picking the senators and left it up uh, to popular six, vote. 16th, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That one's the one that really, mm -hmm. I think, was the death knell in the democracy. I mean, it's a slow burn, um, but. The oh, death no. knell in the republic oh, no, the 16th because the federal reserve I that took away you know that took away a lot of stuff man people could like stack big cities and win you know senatorships and and, and you know house seats that normally wouldn't go to um stuff but either way it, when you're dealing with government you're always dealing with this thing do you want the ship to sink very fast or do you want to keep trying to plug holes in this thing while we are you know until the next one comes along basically yeah, and most people, unfortunately, are more than happy to just try to keep plugging the holes because, again, <laughs> plug, plug, plug away. Well, yeah, but like I said earlier, they start from a position of we have to have government. Government is either necessary and or government. Well, the always, state. Or, or, yeah, but in there, they don't think they don't think of the state 
the government the way that somebody like you or I would. Most people, no, of course, most not. people they don't. When well, you say the state, they're like, "What state do you mean?" It's like, well, exactly. Like, most people either don't make state the, like. Well, because most people don't separate the two. They just think of the government itself. They don't think of what actually. Do you know what the state is? It's the body politic. Do you know what the body politic? It's the voting population, essentially. Well, yeah, that's, but, that's all. The, well, it depends because so, again, my definition of the state is different. My definition of the state is that it's a belief system. Well, of course. I mean, it is definitely an abstraction. The body politic is an abstraction. Okay. It doesn't like you can't point to the body politic or, you know, the, uh, yeah, but it's not, yeah, but, it, but, but as you just described it, it's, it's a, it's a collection of people. This is just an yeah, idea. I'm talking about just an idea. So again, it, the definitions are important. So it depends on what you're defining as the state. But, but again, most people don't separate though. They just think, and, and they start from this position that, like I was saying, either, government is necessary or it's always been here so we'll always have it and that's just like a that's where they start from they don't start from neutral yeah. they already start a couple of blocks down the road and go okay this is the starting point it's like no no we got all this other stuff back here that you're like their skipping over are way ahead huh well yeah they're they're presupposing way too many things you know and that's why that's why i like to put it as they're, they're <laughs> that's, just, they assume that's things are axiomatism does right though it, it forces this paradigm where you have to have all these presuppositions lined up for it to even fucking work well, yeah, 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 of course. And that's one of the most common fallacies I hear is the appeal to tradition. Like, oh, well, you know, I have 10,000 years of human history or it was like, well, yeah, 10,000 years of human history proving that we need uh, government in order for anything to function, in order for us to not be like dying in the streets and walking over corpses and, you know, having things blow up in our face and drinking poison water. We need the government. I'm like, and every one of those things, no. every every one of those things occurred with government, or in most cases because of government. And <laughs> well, yeah, but not only that, but I mean, imagine trying to explain, you know, some technological marvel that we take for granted now to somebody a hundred years ago. They'd look at you like you were insane. So the whole like, oh well, that's how it's been done in the past. Like that doesn't mean anything. That, that that's <laughs> literally not a justification for shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, hey, we should build the internet, but we've been sending letters by mail forever. Why would you build the internet? Like, that doesn't even make any sense to me. Yeah, we, have, you know we, we already like, have. That's how stupid it sounds to me. Anyways, Look, all, I, all I'm saying, guys, all I'm saying is if people had really preferred cars over walking everywhere or taking a horse, they would have invented cars thousands of years ago. So clearly, that's not the best method. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> oh. yeah. I love that's how, what it is. That's all it is. I love how people like get dogmatic about philosophy and and pretend like it can't be shifted or changed or adjusted or uh, I don't know redefined under new light. You know, maybe what uh, Bo Buchkin or uh, Proud on or uh, Trotsky was uh, what they knew in their worldview was a little bit different than ours, you know? So, you know, I hate that argument as well. I, I you know, it's like, that's oh, that's I'm not what anarchism is, has there ever, ever been about. It's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, and I, I hate that. I, that's why I try not to appeal to authority as much as I humanly can, which Well, that gets back to this full, life, full circle, yeah. your order follower thing, Andre. Yeah. Every one of them, it's an appeal to authority. I wanted to say that earlier, and I'm, I apologize for cutting you off. But I've noticed that when you're speaking with someone who got something driven into their head by the the fallacy, that's really the only fallacy that they're going to accept to break it. I've noticed this for a long time that, you know, soldiers are, it's all built on authority, all plea to appeal to authority. So, that's why I keep guys like you in my like on retainer. Basically, when I run into a military guy, I'm like, "Hey, go talk to this guy," because they don't want to hear a word that's coming out of my mouth. They really don't, because they don't yeah. they don't see it as valid yeah. at all. And and even you who was in it, they barely see it as valid because you're not singing to their tune. Oh yeah, no, it's it's amazing the amount of absolute contempt that I've experienced from other people that are in the services that haven't like come to any of these realizations yet or like. It, the light has not even begun to turn on in their heads and they just they approach me with 100 percent contempt like i have literally murdered their mother in front of them almost like i've had a couple of cases where people have just like screamed at me in my face and just like told me to 
like fuck off. And the only That's reason just a they, normal conversation with my mom. Well, no, no, I'm talking about like they told me that because that was the <laughs> was only joking. thing they could do. Because if they did get into a fist fight with me, they'd be dishonorably they'd discharged lose. for getting into a fight while in uniform. So <laughs> it's like. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. You know, that, that's the only recourse they had before they stomped off because they couldn't do anything about it. So the only reason they couldn't fight you was an appeal to authority. Got it. Exactly. <laughs> <Yep>. Exactly. <laughs> and I and I, you know, there's so many times I've wanted to say that, like, you know, if you really feel that strongly about it, you know, damn the consequences. You can stand up for yourself. Well, that's not what the rules. Are. I ain't gonna tell anybody. Uh, Take no. a swing. Let's go. <laughs> I, I've just I've spent the last fifteen minutes explaining to you why I think the state is bullshit. So you can be guaranteed that I'm not going to say shit to the state. I don't tattle to these fuckers. Nope, doesn't yeah. matter. It's it is drilled into their heads, just like it used to be drilled into mine. I had a I very love, very when very tell- strong sense of duty. I, I love when a Marine go or, or one of these soldier class guys goes, you wouldn't last a minute in anarchy, quote unquote. And I'm like, okay, uh, I don't like coming from the guy who can't wipe his ass without permission from his NCO. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> yeah. Like it's funny when I could go get an anarchist who used to be in the same position and rank that you are would probably say, yeah, Dave would be all right in anarchy. So, like, whose authority should I trust here? You know? <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, that that's, uh, at, like, on the one hand, uh, the being the time I spent in the Army was the least productive way I probably could have spent my time for four years and has caused mm-hmm. me nothing but headaches. I mean, the, the, some of the people I've met have, have turned into incredible friends, and the friendship that I have that will last for a lifetime as well as all the stories of all the bullshit I had to do. But, you know, at the same time, it, it gives me those credentials. I have credentials now. I mean, it, it's, it, it's really what it is. And that's really the, the only benefit that I draw from my time in there moving forward. That and how to drive a Humvee, I guess, and shoot a rifle. But well, you also I, could uh, appreciate it for the perspective on life that it has given you, <laughs> so to say. Yeah, that life is garbage and you should embrace the suck. Agreed. <laughs> Definitely don't jump out of planes with huge heavy packs on your back. That would no, probably be the best thing not. I would. That was, take that was from a that. horrible idea. Horrible <laughs> idea. Yeah. Well, you know, they got to toughen you up somehow, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. If your knees, if your knees aren't fucked up by the time you're done, you weren't doing it right. Exactly. Ugh. I already have bad knees, and all I was was fat. So I can't imagine. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a lot like being fat. Imagine jumping out of a plane and being fat. Oh, yeah. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making fun of you for being fat, Dave. No, no, I, um, no, no, it's fine. We, uh, we, um, it's hard to stay skinny down here in Alabama. <laughs> God, is it ever? So I got out and I barbecue, moved back and I went 3, from 000, being like 100, 3, 170 calories. pounds to 185 in like no time. That 15 yeah. pounds went right back on. It didn't even. They didn't even bother to say hi at the door. It just I'm went straight up. I'm about to up. break sub 200 for the first time since like 16, so I'm kind of excited. Hell yeah, man. Good for you. Good for you. I'm excited for you. All you got to do is just uh, quit drinking your sugar. <laughs> Nonsense. Nonsense. It's, and that's one of the hardest things when you live down here in the South. It's like, uh, you want some sweet tea with your sweet tea? Shit, yeah, I do. <laughs> I ain't going to turn that down. Milo's by the gallon. By the, I used That's to drink a gallon a day, man. I, I quit Milo's and lost 30 pounds. That's the only thing I changed yeah. in my life. <laughs> quit the Milo's sweet tea and lost 30 pounds. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to. It's so good. It goes with everything. It literally I everything. like unsweet tea now. I can't even drink sweet tea, man. It, it tastes like I'm drinking you're a, syrup. You're a fucking weirdo. Yeah, you are. Well, yeah, I've been called worse, so... Well, maybe if you stop letting your beard make decisions for you, you wouldn't be having these problems. <laughs> and we wouldn't be calling you a weirdo. Well, if I don't grow this beard, then people won't envy it, and then I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So It's an appeal to authority, Dave. Your beard's authority is an entire, entirely an illusion. It has no authority over you. Stop giving it authority. <laughs> your, <laughs> your follicle masters. All right, I think we're officially off the rails. Well, this, this, <laughs> none of this was productive. <laughs>
<laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Most conversations with Dave aren't productive, so you get used to it. I, I you know, I don't think uh, every conversation with me should be productive, <laughs> in my opinion, or with anyone. I think sometimes you just really need uh, to just talk nonsense with people and get stuff off your chest and and have laughs and and stuff. And and so many people want to be. Uh, s- s- Rattling Serious those sabers, tw- rattling the sabers twenty four seven. It's like take a breath, bud. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, our message is important. We believe in it; otherwise, we wouldn't be here talking about it. But no, you're you're right. Sometimes you do need to just take a step back and be a normal human being and not be a messenger. Like that, that's important too. Taking time out for yourself is vitally important. I think those two issues are actually separate because I think letting off steam every once in a while just having fun is a productive use of time because oh no no, no i'm not no i'm not no, saying, i would say no, with, no, i would say with dave, i say i would say with dave did dave, dave dave gave two points that i think i don't think necessarily are you know go hand in hand because i i think it is a productive thing to do that every once in a while because otherwise you will go insane and then otherwise you do become the person i mean yeah i agree the people that saber rattle 24 7 they may think they're being productive but usually they are burning themselves out and getting more yeah, frustrated. I had to catch the, myself. Yeah, and you get more frustrated in the process. And when you become more frustrated, you get you know angered more easily. You don't make the best arguments all the time. And then you end up doing yourself a disservice because just like most things in this world, there is a point of diminishing returns. And if, yes. You know, and yes. I, 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 I know that because I hit the wall a while ago because I was just going gung-ho 24-7. It's all I wanted to talk about. It's all I wanted to do. It's all I you know, any con- I found a way to steer, steer any conversation into something about anarchy. And yeah, I'm, I'm a lot calmer these days that I've let that go. And as I've talked about a lot recently, I've kind of been just in observation mode overall for a few months, well, a few months hardcore, but the better part of this last year where I've just kind of been observing more and more and not getting out there and not getting involved in a lot of this bs <laughs> and it's just easier for me to sit back and watch and then have fun every once in a while and i'm much more relaxed i mean i'm still an angry guy i'm always going to be an angry guy i've always <laughs> been an angry guy i'm about to turn 40 i've you, been angry you had the inner your, your inner age is like 90 we, we had a discussion about this other day yeah and my exactly i i i am a perpetual 90 year old man a cranky one at that yes I mean, somebody you think, are, but that's part of what makes you lovable. Well, exactly. I think, I think, I think, I think our friend Jason was the one who made the grumpy old man uh, men comment for me and our, our our friend Mark, who was on the show last week, Mark Taylor, and I said, "Yeah, I'm definitely Mathow because I'm the crankiest of all of them." And <laughs> but I I I, uh, I can be cranky from time to time. Uh, I just ask my my girlfriend. <laughs> sure, but but uh, most of the time I uh, water off a duck's back, man. That's kind of how I live life. Uh, uh, well, the same way water rolls off a duck's back. Well, sometimes that good. That's good. But like I said, these days I'm I'm still angry. But I mean, heck, I was given the Billy Joel's "The Angry Young Man" was made my theme song before I was ten, I think. But <laughs> I'm I'm still angry. But I've, I'm a lot more relaxed these days than I have been, and that's why because I've been sitting back and I haven't been engaging as as much, and I'm not on, you know, all the time. I try to save that for when we do this show. I think social media, just being on it too much can make you angry just all in itself. Well, yeah, it can. That's, again, that's another part of the reason that I stepped out of a bunch of those groups and I don't really travel into hardly any of them anymore. And I pick and choose my battles very carefully these days on social media. I much prefer to watch what other people are doing and just make fun of them a little bit and then go on my merry way and try to do things like we were talking about earlier to actually put things in motion right now that can be done to try to get myself and my kids freer and hopefully some other people in the process if they're willing to uh you know do some work of their own (laughs) yeah it's 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 it, it takes a while to learn the whole philosophy get it swallowed really get it all out and then saying okay how am I going to accomplish this? And I think uh, a lot of people are in that phase right there. They're like, how am I actually going to get this done? Um, yeah. Yeah. I, like I said, this, this year, I, I definitely want to focus more on talking about action, actually getting, seeing results, seeing uh, libertarianism, anarcho-capitalism, voluntarism, whatever you want to call it in action in your own life. 
Oh, actually, that reminds me of something I wanted to bring up. I mean, it's not really, it's more of a longer term deal. It's not, ex, it's not necessarily within this next year. Um, but I've, I've made my decision to, to try to go to law school, which I think I'll be able to. I don't, I've been studying for the LSAT for like three or four mm-hmm. months now. I think I'll do all right on it. And then my grades are fine, so admissions shouldn't be an issue. But you know how one of the, the stumbling blocks for a lot of people is, oh, well, how do you deal with law and order? You know, how do you deal with uh, punishment and restitution if you don't have a court system? And where are, I mean, most of everybody's default position is, oh, well, we have private arbitrators. That's what I want to do. That's what I really want to push for. You want to be a, a private judge, essentially. Essentially. Well, yeah, essentially. I want to popularize the idea that you and the person you're having an issue with can go to a neutral third party, an actual like, neutral third party, mm-hmm. and hash it out between the two of you. Yeah, I think judges should be like Yelp reviewed, you know, just have an app. It's like you pick a judge. I'll get on a Skype call, tell them what the issue is, let them pick it out. If it's a five star judge, Four star judge, you know, just just that's all people need these days. That's all that's well, we don't need this the state. We just don't need it. It's so inefficient at this point that it's it's brutally honest and it's becoming more brutally honest. Yes, it really is. And I'm I you know, that's like what, what economic said, reality you know, can only, only be ignored for so long. And, and that's yeah. just the truth about things. Yeah, and it's like, it's like you said, there's only, you know, maybe 1% of us globally, but every day I see more and more people talking about these things. I see more and more people having honest discussions instead mm-hmm. of trying to ask gotcha questions. They're actually asking for information. They're they're not just, you know, shutting down the conversation. They're trying to figure it out and work it through and asking for help, and it's fantastic. I like I said, it's it's a great time to be alive. I've never been more excited about anything. Yeah, it is. Uh, there, there's a lot of stuff happening, and that's why you know it's I, happening. Yeah, but I. But you're right, though, and that's what I try to point to people when people get discouraged and say, because I mean, I think Dave, you're the one I said. They it watch before. too much Alex Jones. <laughs> that's right. Well, yeah, but there's you know there's the world's ending tomorrow. <laughs> you were saying before, Dave, about how people are. Uh, you know, not knowing what they, they, they get to that point. Now they don't know what to do about it necessarily. I wish mm-hmm. there were more people like that. Cause I don't see that many of them. I see more people who have come to the idea, come to different ideologies and come to the overarching idea of anarchism for more of like, I don't know, edgy purposes. Like it's the yeah, cool thing you. to be a trendy you. now. Cause there's so many people that haven't delved into the, you know, not, not even just say- not, not even like, a bunch of the philosophies, much less one of them in particular, like they haven't delved down very deep and they only have a, a very base idea of this. And mm-hmm. they'll say they want freedom and they say they don't like the government. But when it comes time for actual action, these are the people like, well, I can't do they'll They're the ones who will come up with every rationalization of why they can't do something. Well, the state yeah. blocks me from doing this. And this, like th- those arguments annoy the hell out of me because I'm like, I started my business. I did it through the state because I thought I had to, but then I figured out I don't need them anymore, and I just stripped all my, you know, I stripped all that BS away from me. I, I, I uh, renounced my court, you know, my LLC and everything like that, and I just run completely on my own now, and I don't deal with the state, you know. So there, mm-hmm. the the whole well, I can't do this because the state's in my way, and you know, it's one thing to complain about it if the state is somehow preventing you from doing something if you know you're you make the cost benefit analysis and there's something that you want but the risk is way too high of you being like shot immediately for doing the thing you want to do or 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 having the thing you want to have even if you're not harming no feasible way to get in the marketplace without interacting with a state i say interact with a state well yeah you you do what you got to do obviously, but you can, mm-hmm. you know, and this goes back to the point I was making much earlier about, you know, it, it really is. It's about how much effort you want to put in. So that's why I said, I wish more people really did want to put in the effort because there are ideas out there floating around. I mean, we've been talking about it throughout the show. We've talked about it before. There's, there's Ben Stone's book, you know, Sedition, Subversion and Sabotage, Field Manual Number 1. A lot of ideas, depending on your level of commitment, and the level of risk you're willing to endure tons of ideas that people can do right now and yeah just look at cody wilson well yeah 
I mean, Cody's Cody's nuts. I mean, I've, I, the last interview I watched with him, he was talking about how he's still battling uh, in court, and he's gotten he's gotten his last case all the way up to the Supreme Court, and he's just like, yeah, I don't care. I'm just going to keep going. Like they think I'm going to go away, but I'm not. And that's you know, he made the cost benefit analysis, and he decided to take him head on in that manner. So yeah, okay, screw it. Why not? That's what he wants to do. I if like, you're going to be fighting evil and injustice, why not just be a baller? Why not go all out? Well, again, because I have a kid. Well, yeah, like yeah, exactly, and that, that's why I keep saying I have it, a family. It comes down to the individual. You have to weigh these things out. I've talked about it before. I take a lot more risks than most people in my position would. You know, somebody with two kids who's got his own business, and that's how he supports his family. You know, like that. Uh, yeah, I, most people would be like, "Yeah, way too risky," and I'm just like, "Yeah, I'm a crazy mother effer, and I want to go try it, and because I want to do things, I'm tired of sitting around and waiting. I'm tired of sitting around and yeah. hoping that somebody else steps up." And I made that decision a long time ago, and I got a lot of negativity because of it, especially from my family and my ex and everybody, mm -hmm. because well, I was putting myself at risk, and what about my kids? And it's like, well, I made a decision. For me, yeah, I would no, much and you know what. You know what, though? That's that's something that I feel is admirable. Now, obviously, you know, we're all social beings, and if we commit to relationships with people, you know, they do have some say. But at the end of the day, it's it's your time you're using. And if you want to use that as, as constructively and as productively as possible, if you want to make the most impact you can with your time, that's something that should be admired. It's not something that should be derided or put down or, you know, frowned upon like, oh, well, why would you do that? You know? well, well, yeah, I, I would hope it is. Well, I mean, in a sense, I mean, I expect, sure. I expect it from people of the statist variety who don't really understand where I'm coming from to begin with and can't and therefore can't possibly understand why I would want to risk anything to take these to take these battles on. But you well, know, no, but I mean, there's even anarchists who would look at that and be like, uh, why would you, you know, why, why would you risk that much? Look at what all you have to lose. Oh, no, of course. And I hate that. I hate that attitude. I really do. Like it's one thing when you don't want to take the risk yourself. That's fine. That's a value judgment you make. It's your time. It's your yeah, labor that you're putting into judge it. Judge less. <laughs> but don't project it onto other people. Don't gaslight people because you and it's fear feel too, inadequate right? because <laughs> other people are doing more than you. It's the the crab mentality, right? Yeah. Crabs in a bucket. Well, and it's all it's but everyone has like we were talking about earlier in the episode, there's these pragmatic justifications for things. Like, like you said, some people have kids, some people have this or that or this or that, you know, and some people are like, yeah, I've got that, nothing to lose. Yeah, but Screw that applies it. to the person, though. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, exactly. it's one thing to say to yourself, oh, well, you know, th this is the reason why I'm not doing more. It's another thing entirely to make a value judgment on how somebody else utilized their time based on your valuation of if what someone's they have. acting and you're not and you're judging them and they're not aggressing someone, obviously, like get over it like worry about yourself like what are you doing <laughs> yep. you know if if someone's not aggressing against another person you their actions should be little to no circumstance to you exactly exactly so like i said jeremy i i admire the hell out of everything you do oh because i Andrew. wish i had the balls to do it i don't i and i'm perfectly willing to admit that at huh. this particular moment in time i feel like i have much more to lose so. no i i hey and, and like i said I, I i appreciate that um and i wouldn't even necessarily call it balls i mean it it, it is it is partially stupidity they're brass balls yeah but it's, they it, are it's, it's just accepted yeah it, it's partially stupidity though i am ta i am taking risks that i don't necessarily have to but again for me it's just like i said it's a decision i made i want to be able to look at my kids in the eye later in their life and told them that i honestly did everything i possibly could to make them freer yeah. You know, and, and like I said, that's that's huge. Yeah. So well, that and also it's you know practicing what you preach. You know. Well, yeah. Kind of, that, well, well, that's we 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 can't get up here and talk about this stuff stuff day in and day out or week in and week out and not. Oh, we could. Oh, that's that. Oh my God, that reminds me the thought that I lost like uh, uh, all the way back at the beginning of the episode, practicing what you preach. Uh, what Jared was talking about with LARPing anarchy. And like pretending or play acting because there's all there's you know X Y and Z that we can actually do without running afoul of the people with guns. That's mm -hmm. that's what it felt like being in the military, and that's why I had to get out. That, that was the point I was trying to make. Is like, like once you get to that point, 
you you really you know you have to move past it like you can't just say oh well i'm in and that's it and you know whatever done um you have to you have to get out like the the cognitive dissonance is so strong that it's going to literally ruin your life and that's part of what the reason why i had such a hard time towards the end there it was like it was driving me insane like i was carrying all of this moral guilt for where i was and what i was doing yeah and because i was it's, I mean, I was, was carrying play, it just for having a corporate job. So I can't imagine if I was a soldier what I would be feeling like. So I, I don't take these things lightly when I say or try to trigger someone that's in the military in, in any kind of debate tactic. I don't. I, I take these things into very, very, very high consideration. But sometimes I think people need their chains rattled, and sure. uh, you can't. Yeah. You can't go about it a nice way, really. As I've been saying, I think that's an individual thing. It depends on the individual doing it yeah. and the individual. No, it, it is. It is. But I get what uh, you yeah, mean. Dave. That's just goes back to what we were saying. Yep. But, but sorry, I, that, I had to say. No, no. I thought popped that, right back into my head. That, that works out perfectly. Now that we've finally come full circle back to that point you lost much earlier on, <laughs> we should probably get wrapping up anyway. So that works out nicely. So before we get going, you guys have anything you want to close out with? Andre, um, I just want to say, I just want to say, as far as uh, our discussion of talking about um, cognitive dissonance dealing with people who are in the military or people who have spouses and family in the military, and the same thing goes with police or any other, you know, enforcement agency of the state. Once you make the connection, especially if you were already in there, um, once you make the or you reach the level of understanding as far as your moral culpability as an order follower choosing to remain indicates that you are if not comfortable with it willing to sacrifice or willing to engage in the activity that you think is morally detestable because yeah. reasons hmm. so I, I i agree with what dave said as far as you should rattle these people's chains i mean there there's ways to discuss it civilly obviously i don't i'm not really an advocate of getting into debates with people and arguments with people just for the purpose of flinging insults at them, but they need to be shaken out of it. They need to, they need to have that discomfort hoisted upon them so that they can realize just how awful their position actually is because until there's that a, happens, they're not going to realize it. There's a reason why liberals are so, 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 so heavily invested into the social ostracization uh, aspect of propagandization you know, spreading an idea is because it works. So all you got to do is essentially use the same thing. Uh, you know, Hey, what you're doing is bad. And I just thought you should know. Mm -hmm. And the more people that tell them that eventually it's going to stack up and <laughs> fall over on top of them. If you know what I mean? Yes. And then they'll quit. Or if it goes on for long enough, they'll blow, they'll blow their brains out. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we, we always <laughs> hope for the first, I know, not I the know. latter, but, I uh, I, I appreciate Andre coming on the show again. I, I have uh, quite enjoyed him stepping in to uh, become a more common guest. Sure. And, it's always uh, a pleasure Jeremy. to be on here. Yeah, always a good conversation. So Jeremy is back on the fiends as of like what three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Um, that I've been back on the fiends for months. I, I, only, I only took a two months. I, no, I, I only took a two. Like, I was only off for two weeks. And that was like a month and a half ago, right? It was Thanksgiving. So yeah, a month and a half ago. <laughs> all, all, I've been so almost busy. Two, almost two months ago at this point. I, I was only out for two weeks and then Michael needed me in an <sighs> Everything emergency. Everything blends together for me at this point, so. Jeremy. I'm, so, I'm such a blur right now. <laughs> That's all right. I couldn't tell you what I ate for breakfast this morning, so don't feel bad. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you, you and Michael made amends and you're back on the show. Yeah, yeah, we're all good now. So thank you. All right. Well, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at theseedsofliberty.com. And we'll catch you next time. Peace. 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 Now that you put it that way, I, now I, I have the answer to that question. It's projection. That's what it is. It's not a cop-out to call us utopians. They're actually projecting their own self-hatred onto us. Michael
Dean from the Freedom Teens Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, go with agoristhosting.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows user modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.